Ecclesiastes chapter five, verses eight. If you see the poor oppressed in a district and justice and rights denied, do not be surprised at such things. So we shouldn't be surprised when we keep seeing our people get killed by the police. Don't be surprised at the homelessness. Don't be surprised at the wino sitting in front of the liquor store. Don't be surprised when you see the veterans of the armed forces without a place to stay, living under overpasses and bridges, eating out of trash cans. No, don't be surprised at that. Whoever you see in power, that's not the true power because whoever you see in power are the puppets. They are the smoke screen. Remember that. Whoever you see sitting in the governor's seat, whoever you see sitting in the seat of the senators, whoever you see sitting in the seat of the mayor or the mayors, whoever you see, just know they are the frontal puppets. There are officials that are higher than the ones you see. But guess what? Somebody has to take the fall, right? Somebody has to be blamed for the hypocrisy of the democracy. Someone has to be blamed for the black on black crime, the Hebrew Israelite versus the Hebrew Israelites, Hebrew Israelite, Judah on Judah crime, Yahuda on Yahuda crime, Hebrew Israelite on Hebrew Israelite crime, Negro on Negro crime. See, somebody got to be blamed for that. So we got to put y'all people out front. We got to put y'all people on the front lines so that when you look, they'll be the blame. We need those who will play the role of making up the whole curtain. Who, who's the curtain? See, it's, it's about looking behind the curtain. But who's the curtain? Our house Negroes are lined up to facilitate and establish and to build and contrive the curtain. The curtain are the people you see. Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse eight. If you see the poor oppressed in the district and justice and rights denied, do not be surprised at such things for one official is eyed by a higher one, meaning that there's always someone looking down at the ones that you see. There's always a higher oppressor looking down at the manager. There's always a higher oppressor looking down at the one you think is the CEO. There's always a higher oppressor looking down at the one you think are the owners. They are always oppressors above and looking down on those you think are the real landlords. Even these fast food restaurants, these fast food chains and, and these corporations that you see and these merchants, whoever you see, those are not the real people. So I don't care how far you get up the chain. I don't care how far you get up in corporate America. I don't care how far you get up in white supremacy. I don't care how far you get up in a system. There's still always somebody that's higher than the one you see. And there's still one higher than the one you don't see. So even the one you don't see, there's someone higher than him or higher than her. The oppressors keep going up the chain. That means that there's a long food chain. You get that? There's a long line. A scapegoats who are looked at as the real oppressors, but you never see the real ones all the way up top, behind the curtain. You never see them. Why? Because over both of those officials, they are still one. There's still one that's looking down on both of them. Remember the pyramid? Remember that pyramid I told y'all? From the debt slaves, the lost wandering sheep, all the way up top to the eye of Lucifer. Yeah, right? So who's looking down? But who's looking down at his system, making sure that everything is running smoothly? Who's looking down, keeping the strings pulled? Who's looking down, keeping everyone in their place? Who's looking down, making sure that the corporations are running exactly the way that they have been told to run? Lucifer's looking down on his system. Lucifer's looking down on his system to see who's doing what. Now, why you think he got to use these men to build a surveillance system for him? That's the eye of Lucifer. So when you in the system and you spend most of your lives trying to work to get up in the system, the more wicked you'll be, the more vile you'll be, the more that you'll have to sell your soul over to Satan because he's the one that's looking over his system. But guess what? There's still a higher official than Lucifer. The almighty Abba sovereign Yahuwah is looking down over Satan. Come on, y'all, y'all, y'all got to get that. So no matter who you see, there's still someone that you don't see. No matter who you consider the oppressor, there's still another oppressor. 
No matter who you consider the oppressors, they are still more oppressors. All the way until you get to as high up as you think you can get. And then there's one higher than all. Why you think he's called the most high? <laughs> you don't get no higher than the most high, y'all. You get no higher than him. So he's the one that's looking down. He's the one that uses the earth as his footstool. He's the one that prepares a table in front of your enemies. He is the one who shines light down on a dark situation. He's the one that exposes the wicked. He's the one that sees what's going on in the spirit realm. He's the one that shuts doors and opens doors. He's the one that stops things from happening, keeps things going. He's the one that shifts in the spiritual realm. So obstacles and challenges and traps and strategies that normally would have caught you up don't even touch you. You don't even get to see them. So listen, it says here, for one official is I by a higher one, and over them both are others higher still. So let me help you. Over the first black governor of Maryland, Westmore, and the mayor, Muriel Bowser, both Democrats, you got an, another official that's looking over both of them. So that means that whoever you see in power, they have orders to follow. They got commandments. They Just like y'all's people have commandments to follow, you have to realize those who have a position of power and influence in Satan's system, they got commandments to follow too. And their commandments come from those who are over them, who are over them, who are over them up until they are right directly under Satan, giving orders all the way down the chain. And this is how you're affected. So, in essence, you're not affected by the mayors, the governors, the senators, the vice presidents and the presidents and federal agencies. You know who you are really controlled by? You know who you're really oppressed by? You're oppressed by Lucifer. You're oppressed by Satan because the orders that come down to these politicians and these religious figures and leaders and institutions and governmental infrastructures and these wicked corporations. You got to know that these orders come down from Satan himself. It's just that you don't see the one that's directly connected to Satan. You see all of the puppets. And so if you don't understand the spirit realm, if you don't understand everything you see in the system from a spiritual aspect, you'll walk your whole life. You'll live your whole life. You'll work your whole life. You'll be entertained your whole life, not understanding and knowing that this all comes from the commands of Satan. For one official was eyed by a higher one and over them both are others higher still. Verse nine, the increase from the land is taken by all. The increase of the land is taken by y'all. See, whatever is increased on the land, whether it be food, whether it be gold, jewels, diamonds, whether it be coats, hats, pants, shoes, bags, whatever the increase is taken by all. But guess what? You don't ever see a profit off of nothing you make because the increase is taken by all. Everybody gets the increase. So that means that you never truly get what you work for. You never truly optimize and maximize all they told you you were worth because you felt like you had the highest price tag connected to you like a slave. You're just a $50,000 a year slave. You're just a $65,000 a year slave. You're just a $25 an hour slave, $45 an hour slave. That's all why, because all of the increases of the land is taken by y'all. So, okay, you make $45 an hour. Okay, whatever you increase or whatever the increase is for you who makes $45 an hour is the same increase for one who makes $25 an hour. So the increase goes to everybody. But wait, listen, it says the increase from the land is taken by y'all, but the king himself profits from the fields. So you don't profit nothing. The king, the one that you voted for, Judah, come on, Judah and Israel. Come on, Negroes. Come on, Hebrew Israelites. You see that? The king, he profits from the fields. The increase is taken by y'all. The increase is taken by those you live amongst. The increase is taken by the same culture and society that you live in. The increase is taken by those who hate you, around you, those who are racist and stiff neck around you. The same ones, the same ones who rob and steal and kill. Yeah, the increase is shared by all. So that means you're all left with nothing because the profit goes to the king. 
There you go. The king you voted for, though. You voted for the king. You voted for him. And wait a minute. Even though you voted for him, it's still, it's still not the king you get. You get that? The king you vote for still winds up, not still winds up, not being the king you voted for. <laughs> you see the king, but you really didn't vote for that king. You voted for a king, but you didn't vote for that king. Oh, but please, you voted for a king. But you didn't vote for that king. But just the simple fact, but just the sheer fact, but just because of the audacity and the gall of you voting for a king, period, outside of Yah himself, you're going to get any king he allows to sit in the hot seat because this is Satan's system. So that means that Satan has reign in the spirit realm because of the agreements that all of these men who are looking to climb up the corporate ladder have made with him made with Satan. And so because these men have made agreements in the spiritual, right? They've made spiritual agreements, oaths and covenants with Satan. Then that means that Satan has a legal right to, to, to facilitate and to manifest what his people agreed with in the spirit. See these men that have the keys because Satan has given these men the keys to rule. Well, guess what? They made agreements, binding and loosing. They made agreements in the spiritual. So that guess what? These men have a right to oppress. These men have a right to enact wicked laws, pass wicked laws. These men have a right. Why? Because they made the agreement with Satan in the spiritual. And guess what? They Nobody's agreeing with y'all. Everybody's saying y'all's laws are done away with. Ain't, doesn't that sound like the Christian church? Doesn't that sound like this modern culture and society? Y'all's laws are done away with? Come on now. And the only laws that matter is the laws of the land, which can fluctuate, which can turn, which can, which can pass. Come on. Which can be established and facilitated. With no one even knowing that these laws have been facilitated and established. Why? Because while they passing wicked laws, you heathens are being entertained by Cardi B. While these wicked laws are being passed, you heathens are turning up and getting drunk every Friday night. So much so, you don't even know that Monday's about to be right up on your behind and you got to get up Monday morning to go right back to the plantation. See what I'm saying? See, so while you are on love and hip hop, they are passing legislation. And it goes over your head. Why? Because you sitting so low to the ground. Why? Because you so oppressed. Why? You don't even know you oppressed. Why? You don't even know whether you coming or going half the time. Why? Because you have used this system to numb your pain and numb all of the woes that you face, not realizing the reason why you're facing all of these woes is because you left Yah. You rejected him. And so he's allowing everything that you feel like is your refuge. He's allowing what you consider your refuge to destroy you. What you are considering your refuge to deny you. What you keep on considering your refuge to ignore you. What you keep considering your refuge to just exploit you. That's what it is. Oh, y'all get y'all better get this. So verse nine, the increase from the land is taken by y'all. The king himself profits from the fields. So the king profits. You don't. You don't profit nothing. You don't profit nothing in this earth. You profit nothing in this land. Lyndon B. Johnson, who was President 36, by deception, had given the pastors the 501c3 tax code papers and documents so they could sign it and waive their constitutional rights. You don't even know that Lyndon B. Johnson said that he'll have niggas voting for 200 years. He said that as a Democrat, I had these niggas voting Democrat 200 years. That's what Lyndon B. Johnson said. So don't you see how Christianity and don't you see how the Democratic Party are both connected? Even Woodrow Wilson shared concepts and ideas from the Democratic Party. Woodrow Wilson. Come on. Now, see now, they told us. Y'all free. Democrats. Freedom, liberation, no more oppression. Y'all going to get y'all some rights this year. Never thinking, never remembering, they never gave us the 40 acres and the mule. So hold on, if they never gave us that, how can we believe that we're going to get everything they're promising us now? <laughs> Psalm 
chapter 146. Let's start at verse 1. First of all, praise Yahuwah. Not praise your Mercedes Benz. Not praise your house. Not praise your pastor. Not praise your degrees. Not praise your butt. Not praise your what you think is a cute face. Not praise and idolize your superstars and your celebrities. No, praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah, oh my soul. Praise him, oh my soul. Your soul should belong to him. He should be in charge of your soul. Praise him. Don't praise your boyfriend and girlfriend you still shacking up with. Don't, that's right, don't praise your hair. Don't praise your money and your nails and your makeup. Don't praise social media. Don't stop praising Beyonce. Stop, 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 stop praising Doja Cat and all of them that you so hung high on. No, because that's your problem. That's your problem. You only realize they puppets. These are music industry puppets. See, these are movie industry puppets to keep y'all thinking that y'all going to receive everything they're slaving to get to keep you enslaved in your mind because why you trying to reach their superstardom status you enslaving yourself to get there and you'll never get it. You'll never receive it. Wait a minute. Praise Yahuwah, oh my soul. Verse two, I will praise Yahuwah all my life. One of the reasons why we can't get nowhere is because we hadn't given Yah our lives. No, you got to praise him your life. So nothing gets to praise but him. Nothing gets to praise. I will sing praise to my Elohim as long as I live. No, but you're not singing praises to Elohim. You know who you singing? You know who you know whose praises you singing? Yeah, that's right. You praising your rappers. That's yeah, you praising your singers. That's who you praising. And you don't even realize that the music industry has nothing but Judah. That's really singing. That's really singing. That's really rapping. You see, that's really making the music industry worth being in. It's because of Judah. Judah's rapping and Judah's singing. Yo, and people, we don't even realize that. They got to keep us propped up in the music industry to make us look at them like that is the standard of success. And you don't even realize they don't even have half of the stuff that you see. They don't have the gold and the diamonds and the jewels and the Ferraris and the mansions and all of that. What they, that's just what they have for the moment as long as they keep you a dummy, as long as they keep you sleep. That's what that's for. All that they have on their black cards, all the platinum plaques. See, all of the stuff that you see, that's just to keep you sleep. The moment they start waking up, the moment they start seeing the oppression, the moment they start speaking out against the injustice of the oppressor that keep on writing hits for them to rap and sing, the moment that, guess what? Uh-oh, your endorsement deals and all your money's got to get stripped away from you. We got to make you a public spectacle, I told you. You got to be buck broken right in front of your peers, right in front of the music execs, right in front of all of your producers and hit makers and engineers. All the records you featured on, all of your peers, they got to see you get buck broken. They got to see that. Why? Because now you're speaking out against the oppression and the toil. See, this ain't got nothing to see. See, we're not, our people are not saying we hate you. We hate a group of people. All they're saying is, wait a minute, I see the oppression. I'm getting tired of the oppression. I want to spend time with my family. I'm getting tired of being ganked and yanked and underpaid. I'm getting tired of being enslaved and seeing pennies while you making trillions. We just getting tired of that. And the reason why we're getting tired of that is because we see that this is a never ending game that's being played. And y'all are the only winners and we're the losers. And so, and then not only that, we've come to see who we are. We're not saying that you're not something. We're just saying who we are. <laughs> and just by saying that, just by shedding light on who we are as a people, uh-oh, we got to strip everything. Because the worst thing would be for those who are, are aspiring to be like you wake up and see who they are on, a, on the account of you waking up seeing who you are. See? Now, because you know, Judah and Israel, we got to follow a trend. You know, we got to follow a style. You know, we have to follow a hairstyle. We got to follow. We have, you see, we got to follow what's 
what's hot today. We have to follow what's on top. And so because we have to follow these, the culture, we have to follow the styles and the trends. They need trendsetters. That's what they need. And so as long as they stay in their place, then they have, then the oppressor has the house Negroes for the field Negroes to follow. So we, so, so the moment that I told you, the moment that the house Negroes wake up, oh, we got a problem because then the field Negroes now can see that, wait a minute, we've been following the wrong image. The image that we've been following has been perpetuated by the oppressor. And so then this is when it becomes a problem. Verse three, do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. The Republican Party cannot save you. They're mere men. The Democratic Party cannot save you. They're mere men. The political system cannot save you. They're mere men. Your church system with your false pastors cannot save you. They're mere men. Do not put your trust in princes. Do not put your trust in the governors, the mayors and the senators. The Democrats, don't put your trust in them. In mortal men who cannot save, they can't redeem you. They can't give you and offer you salvation. Verse four, when their spirit departs, they return to the ground. The moment they die, the moment they flatline, hooked up to that ventilator, spirit gone back to the heavenly father. The body goes to the ground. You get that? And these are the same people you put your trust in, but they dead. So they can't promise you nothing. But not only are they dead now physically, they were dead here spiritually. So, you know, they couldn't promise you nothing while they were still here in public office. They couldn't give you nothing then. So, you know, they can't give you nothing now. Why? They're mere men. Don't put your trust in them. Verse four, when their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Their plans come to nothing. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. All the stuff that they promised you, all the legislation that the Congress got together to pass because of this law that they made. They, they, and that's another thing. See how people don't understand enough of the structure of the government to know what they're doing. See how people don't even know. Our people don't know the three branches of government. They don't know nothing. They don't know the executive branch. They don't know the judicial branch nor the legislative branch. They don't know. They have no idea how the whole process works, but yet they vote every four years. I got to put my vote in. Okay, go ahead. And you don't even know nothing you voting for. Nothing. Verse three, do not put your trust in princes and mortal men who cannot save. Verse four, when their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Verse five, blessed, blessed is he whose help. Is the Elohim of Jacob blessed? So where are your blessings going to come from? Your blessings are going to come from Yah. You're having your hope in him. W what does that mean? That means that no, no matter who's voted in office, whether it be the Democrats or the Republicans, my hope is not in them. My hope is in Yah. Why? Because he's the higher official. That's eyeing all those below him. No one's higher than Yah. So why would you vote anyone lower than him? Why would you vote for anyone lower than the most high Yah? If he's the most high, I want to vote for the one who's the most high. I want to vote for one who no one else below him can get over. That's who I'm voting for. Blessed. Blessed is he who's help. So that means that when the political system is failing, your help comes from whom? Yah. When the religious system is failing, your help comes from whom? Yah. When the economical system is failing, your help comes from whom? Yah. When the educational system is failing, your help comes from whom? Yah. That's where your help comes from. How can your help come from the same system that was put over you to keep you sinning? How could your help come from a system that was put over you to keep you sinning? How could your help come from a system that was orchestrated and put over you to keep you sinning? Verse five, blessed is he whose help is the Elohim of Jacob, of Israel, 
whose hope is in Yahuwah, his Elohim, the maker of heaven and earth, the maker, the maker, the creator, the sustainer, the orchestrator of heaven and earth. Y'all better get this tonight. Y'all, <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all got to get this tonight. Listen. So he says, blessed is he whose help is in Elohim of Jacob, whose hope is in Yahuwah, his Elohim. Verse six, verse six, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. Yahuwah who remains faithful forever. Yeah, Yahuwah remains faithful forever. He doesn't wither nor waver. <laughs> He's not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. You, you all got to hear what I'm saying. He doesn't need no laws. He, he, he doesn't need no laws, but his laws for you to follow so that you could be protected in the spirit realm. He remains faithful forever. Your president doesn't remain faithful forever. The vice president doesn't remain faithful forever. The senator doesn't remain faithful forever. The governor, none of them remain faithful forever. Why? Because they're not the most high. That's why. They're not the most high. So they can't remain faithful forever. They got to remain faithful to those who are over them, who aren't the most high. He remains faithful forever, which means what he has written is enforced forever. Forever, meaning that his word is the only foundation that's sure. His foundation, his word is the only thing that's certain. His word, his foundation is the only thing everlasting. His word, his foundation is the only thing eternal. When all of your false religions are destroyed, when your whole government and political system has imploded, when your financial system has been destroyed, when all of your food has been exhausted, when all of your resources have been exhausted, when everything's done and gone and over with, his word and foundation is sure. So why would I put my hope and trust in anything in anything less. Why would I do that? See, most of your hopelessness, see, most of your hopelessness and your depression comes from the fact that you keep putting your trust in a foundation unsure, uncertain. That, that's where your depression's coming from. See, your, your, see, your depression and your sadness and your hopelessness comes from the fact that you're not putting your hope and trust in the one who remains faithful forever. And the reason why you're not putting your hope and trust in the one who, who remains faithful forever is because you think you're going to miss something. You think you're going to really miss something that the oppressor is going to give you in his system. You think you're going to miss something. And that's the reason why people spend their whole lives never, never turning to the very one who's faithful forever, who can save them out of any and everything they ever going to go through. Why? Because the oppressor keep them running and working and toiling and sweating and bleeding and chasing and making and running and, and, and doing everything. And they never stop because they think that if they don't keep running and sweating and chasing and bleeding and crying and working and toiling, they think they're going to miss something if they don't stop. So that's the reason why people never unplug from the system of Satan long enough to get in the most high, because they think the moment they jump out of the system, the moment they disconnect from Satan's system and get in the most high, they're going to miss something. They think they're going to miss something. I'm going to miss some fun. I'm going to miss some turn up. I'm going to miss a birthday party. <laughs> I'm going to miss a cabaret. Yeah. I'm going to miss a gala. I'm going to miss an award ceremony. I'm going to miss a football game of bell worship. I'm going to miss something. So that's the reason why people never get in the one who's faithful and true forever. They never get in him because they feel like if they get in him, life is meaningless. They feel like they, they, they see people feel like if they get in him, it's, it's over. I didn't miss, I didn't, I didn't miss my opportunities. I didn't miss my chance to make any life for myself. And you don't even realize apart from Yah, you have no life. You try, you see, you so concentrated. You so worried about making a life you don't even realize that you ain't making nothing. See, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of life, the gift of life is by Elohim through Yahushua HaMashiach. The gift of life. 
the gift of eternal life at that. So you so worried about making a life. I ain't got time to get in the scripture. I ain't got time to pray. I ain't got time in the word. I got to go make a living. I got to, you ain't got no life. That's the whole, that's the whole point. You ain't got no life. Why? Because you got to toil and you have to continue to be enslaved and oppressed in order to make this little life that, that continues to get sucked away from you. Verse seven, he upholds the cause of the oppressed. Here we go. We back to it again. Verse seven, he upholds the cause of the oppressed. See, we keep going to the same lawmakers and legislation to get rights that are going to stop the oppression of our people. But no, that's never going to happen because verse seven says, yeah, he upholds the cause of the oppressed. He does it. Not your, not, not those who rule over you, not your captors, not your oppressors. <laughs> they, they don't uphold the cause. They don't uphold the cause of the oppressed. They may uphold the cause of the oppressors, but they sure don't uphold the cause of the oppressed. See, the oppressed is not even in the equation. The oppressed is not even in the game. The oppressed is not even invited to the political party to start with. You don't you are not even invited to the party. So you're trying to figure out why there's never any rights at the end of the four years because you wasn't invited to the party. The party wasn't for you. The party was for the politicians and the, the ones who play the game. The, that's who the, yeah, that's who the party was for. The party was for the oppressors that come together, having a party on your oppression, having a party on you working the system and working the plantation. They are continuing to have a party and you don't know what type of fun goes on in their party. You don't know. Cause behind the scenes, the Republicans and the Democrats, unbeknownst to many, work together. They partying together. Y'all don't even see the party. Why y'all think y'all voting for two opposing rights and two opposing views and two opposing parties? Y'all don't even realizing that they sleeping together. You don't even realize that they drinking and smoking and popping pills together. You don't even realize that they making deals together. You don't even realize they playing golf together. You don't even realize they making business deals together. You don't even realize they got stock. They own stock in the prison industrial complex together. You don't even realize that they fund your oppression together. You don't even realize that they optimize, maximize, and they capitalize off of your oppression together. The Democrats and the Republicans. Do you know why? Because they are owned by the same bird. Two wings are the same bird. Doesn't matter. Because no matter how many views each opposing party has, there's one view between the both of them that they keep as a standard because it belongs to those who are over them both. Didn't I tell you? There's still a higher official that looks over both. So where so while you have the Republicans and the Democrats, you have an official that's looking over both of them. And who's the official? The official is the Federal Reserve. That's the official looking over both. So I don't care who you vote for. All right. While they in the see while they're in the church voting the pastor. Why you think the pastor? Why you think you keep having the same old pastor preaching for 20 years on the pulpit? Because it's politics in the church, the same political, see the political system and how it is constructed in the world, in the United States of America entirely. You have to realize that same political structure is in the church because the church is connected to the state. See the church and state, church and state was supposed to be separated, right? Isn't that the reason why the Protestants came to this country so that they would not have to be underneath the church that's headed by a pope, right? The separation of church and state, but you know that the church and state came back together. So the same politics, the same political system that our people keep voting for as Democrats, well, it's in the church too. See, because they got to vote their pastor in or out. And as long as that pastor is preaching the way the way he ought to preach 
see, in favor of the people, just like the politicians have to operate and they have to pass laws and legislations on behalf of the people. The problem is, is that because the curtain and the smoke screen is so blinding, we don't even see that we keep voting for a machine that's broken, a machine that has always been corroded, right? Well, it's the same thing in the church. They think they keep voting for the pastor to tell them the same thing because it sounds good to them. But what they keep voting for is destroying them. And nine times out of 10, the same people that you have on the board of the 501c3 that's able to hire or fire the pastor. These are the same people that work for the government. These are the same people that work. For the Department of Defense, the same people that work for the Justice Department, the same people that work for Department of Agriculture, the same people. <laughs> and they working in the church because they're taking their services for the oppressor and they're working right in the church. And they're able to keep that pastor a politician. So the pastor has to play the politics. He can't go beyond that. He has to preach to people the same thing that the governor and the senator and the mayor is going to come in to tell them because whatever the pastor preaches, it has the line right up with what the governor and the senators and the mayors come in and promise the people who still voting Democrat, black folk, Judah and Israel, right? So the pastor can't say anything contradictory or in opposition to the senator. See, or in opposition to the county executive that he got coming in there that's going to come in right on the pulpit. Come on, that's how you know that the altar's broken. That's how you know that Baal speaks from the altar. Baal is in charge of the altar. Because there ain't no how in the world that we got the pastor and the county executive who keep taking government, government payouts. How are they speaking on the same pulpit? How's that happening? See? The same county, the same county executive who's taking bribes, how is he preaching? How is he giving his spiel and his speech on the same pulpit that our pastor, our beloved pastor preaches from? How were they speaking on the same pulpit, on the same altar? That's because the altar is broken. That's why. So you know what you wind up having? You know what you, you wind up having you wind up having a fruity choir director, a false pastor, and a crooked politician all on the same altar. And you got your lost sheep out there, all Democrats, looking like mindless robots and zombies. That's what you got. Psalm 146, verse 7. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. Yahuwah sets prisoners free. There we go. Yahuwah sets prisoners free. See, when our people, when Judah and Israel, when our people gets, when our people get convicted for crimes that we didn't commit, now who lets them out? Who lets them out before the term that the system said that they supposed to serve? The judge throws at our people 25 to life, but wait a minute, they didn't commit the crime, right? They innocent. But you know, in this country, we are guilty until proven innocent. Blacks. See, whites, they're innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> you get that? You see how the country still split up, split up between black and white? Now, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. None of us did that. The oppressors did that. Because their goal is to quietly facilitate and establish a new world order, which is going to enslave humanity. So they can't see us. We They can't see that in the end, we all going to be oppressed together. No, they got to keep the narrative going. Got to keep the narrative going. Got to keep us fighting. Got to keep us. And as a matter of fact, I saw a video that was shared where the member of the KKK said that he wants a civil war. They want that. They That's what they want for this country. They, they don't they don't want to come together. Blacks and whites. No, they don't want to come together. With the same, with different views, being able to come together. No, they said that how can you have a uh, different political party affiliation views? How can you have different religions and different skin color, different race, different ideologies? How can you come together? 
So he says that, well, wait a minute, black folk, we don't got to go up to them. We don't have to go to their neighborhoods and we don't have to lynch them. We don't have to kill them. We'll just, you know, drop off guns and dope, drop off weed and alcohol and drop it off to them. And then we'll watch them do it to themselves. And that's what he said. So what I'm saying is that don't you see how this is spiritual? This is a spiritual thing. This is a spiritual thing. And so the goal is to do what? To keep the civil war, to brew up a civil war. The Democratic Party began the civil war. The same party that black folk, that Israel and Judah keep voting, Democrat. These are the same people that don't want you here. The Democrats don't want you here, Israel and Judah. And so this is what's running your political system. This is what's running your religious system, both one and the same educational system. This is what's running the entertainment. This is what's running. And this is the reason why this is the reason why you get some unintelligent, unarticulate rapper talking about politics, have no idea, have no inkling about American history, don't know the scripture. They don't know nothing about the oppression and the racial inequalities and racial disparities of black folk in this nation. They have no ideas of none of the legislations and none of the laws. They don't know nothing about none of the wars. They don't know anything we've been through. But yet these are the spokespeople for our people on behalf of the Democratic Party or whatever political party affiliation that they're speaking in favor of. So listen, verse seven, he upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. See, all of the homelessness and all of those of our people who are still starving in this country, why they giving millions, why they giving millions to other countries, other nations, and we right here starving at home. He, yeah, but y'all, but y'all's the one that upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. Yahuwah sets prisoners free. Verse eight, Yahuwah gives sight to the blind. Hold up. Wait a minute. He gives sight to the blind. He's not talking about physical eyes. He gives sight to the blind. Those who are spiritually blind, he gives you sight. <laughs> he gives you sight. So you can see. So you can get the wool pulled from over your eyes. He gives you sight. He gives you insight. He gives you foresight. That's what he gives you. Spiritual discernment. He gives you revelation. He gives you prophecy. He allows you to see end time Bible prophecy unfolding. Yah, give sight to the blind. See, your political party affiliation cannot give you sight. If you blind, their whole goal is to keep you blind. Why would they give you sight to see anything? Yahuwah lifts up those who are bowed down. Yahuwah loves the righteous. Verse 9, Yahuwah watches over the alien. Yahuwah watches over the alien. Those who come to the United States of America, Yahuwah watches over them. Just like the Haitians. When the Haitians tried to come over here, see, all those who try to come over here, Yah watches over the aliens. But what is this nation saying? What is the United States of America saying? No aliens. No immigrants over here to this country because we don't want drugs to come in this country. We don't want guns and we don't want illegal activity, criminal activity to come in this country. When in reality, y'all are the ones who have facilitated this violence. See, we get all of that from y'all. We don't get that from the mother countries. The mother countries come over here because y'all oppressing them over there. And so they think their own, their only protection and refuge and their only way to be able to succeed is to come over here. But we're being told, no, if they come over here, they're going to bring, you know, they're going to bring their family members. And this is where crime, as if we don't have crime here already, as if we don't have black on black genocide already, as if we don't come on, y'all, as if we don't have police genocide here already, as if we're not miseducated over here already, as if we're not already going hungry over here already, as if we don't already have all of the problems that could ever be. That could ever be manufactured as if we don't have these problems already existing over here already. Now, what can these people that come from these other impoverished countries under under a system of totalitarianism? What can these people possibly have to come over here to do to us what have already been done to us by those who oppress us? Tell me. So verse nine, Yahuwah watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow. 
See, the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. That's another thing that you got to realize that the Democratic Party had done. You have to realize that they destroyed the black family by massive government welfare. That split apart the black family. See, the goal was to take the man, the head of the household, from over the family. And so daddy government can come in and can offer our black women, our Hebrew Israelite women, all of the needs, all of their, all of their necessities, all of their amenities, government housing assistance, WIC, EBT, all of that stuff. And so the man, he can't compete with that. And so it, but it kept us from being over our women and teaching and guiding our children and protecting our women, protecting our households. And they kept us out. And so no, and so no wonder the dope stroll got us. No wonder the prison industrial complex got us. No wonder the graveyards got us. See, you must realize, you know what the Democratic Party did to black folk, did to Judah and Israel? It kept us enslaved. It kept the black man, the Hebrew Israelite man, enslaved by the prison industrial complex. It kept our children enslaved under the educational system. And it kept our women enslaved under the Christian church. Now, I better get it. Y'all better get it. So you see the three institutions of slavery that keeps our people deaf, dumb, and blind, unawakened, stagnated, spiritually malnourished and dehydrated, can't get up for nothing, take 20 steps to take a million back. Come on. And so this is the reason why we are where we are. It's because we are y'all's people. And guess what? You think he was playing when he said in the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me, no other Elohim before me. Did you think he was playing when he said that? Yet they tell us under white Jesus, the law's done away with. Yet we can see the ramification of going against his first commandment. That's the first one. Don't have nothing before me, meaning don't have anything that will compete with me in my presence. But Judah and Israel has done just that. We've gotten every idol, every God. We've gotten everything that we think can offer us prosperity, blessing, and peace. And we've put it in front of us, right before the eyes of Yahweh. And he's looking down at us, saying, as long as you Negroes. As long as my people, as long as my people have other Elohims before me, my back will be turned towards them. As long as my people have other Elohims before me, my back will be turned before them. My back will be turned against them. My hand will be against them. Verse 9 again, Yahuwah watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow. The fatherless and the widow. See, because why, why are we fatherless? Why, why you think Yah protects the fatherless? Because why, why are we fatherless in the first place? Why are we fatherless? Why, why, are, we, why are we fatherless? Because y'all didn't, why y'all voted for another king as a whole, generally. As a nation, you voted for a king. And that's the reason why you left fatherless. Because the only way that you can reap the benefits of the king that's over you is, is you, yeah, the, you got to be fatherless. <laughs> the father can't be in the home. The father can't be around y'all, protecting y'all, loving y'all, caring for y'all, leading y'all, guiding y'all, teaching y'all. No, you got to be fatherless. So now y'all has to come in and now he has to protect and now he has to provide and have empathy for those who have nothing to do with the fact that y'all heathens done voted for a king. <laughs> yeah, and the widow too. The widow. Why? Because the fatherless getting beat down, shot up by the police. He getting outed and killed in jail, in prison. So that's why the that's why we got that's why we have widows and we have those who are fatherless. Men. 
Don't you see that? Widows are left without husbands. Children are left without fathers. So this is where you have the widows and the fatherless. That's what's going on with Judah. That's what's going on with Israel right now. Mm-hmm. See? So, verse 9, Yahuwah watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked and alien. He watches over the Gentiles. See, before Mashiach came and salvation was made available to the Gentiles, what we was what were what what was Judah and Israel supposed to do? Judah and Israel were supposed to uphold the standard of Yah's holiness and righteousness so that the alien could receive the law. <laughs> we were supposed to have been the number one exemplifier of the law so that the alien can see an example of the holiness and righteousness of the nation that Yah made his chosen people, made his prized possession, the apple of his eye. So you see, when we don't do right, we affect everybody else when we don't do right. Because if we're supposed to be the standard and everyone is looking at us act a fool, everyone's looking at us kill one another, everyone's looking at us spew out profanity. Everyone's looking at us degrade one another and humiliate one another. What are the other nations going to think? See, we're giving Yahuwah a bad name when we don't follow his laws. Yeah, you got to get that. When we don't follow his commandments, we give him a bad name to those who are looking at us. See, we're hot. We, see, you got to realize something. Israel, Judah, we're held to a higher standard. And so and so when we don't hold that standard up so that y'all can be proud of the standard in which he set, Then he becomes disgruntled and angry because then the other nations take y'all for a joke. Y'all see, this is this is see, this is past us. This is past us. This is beyond us. This, this, see, this ain't about us. This is about him. He chose Israel as a nation. Why? Because we were a small nation. You see, we were, we were not a powerful nation. We were not a large nation. No. We were actually a powerless nation. We were the, we were a small nation. But Yah chose us to demonstrate his power. That's why Yah chose us. He chose us to demonstrate his power. So we were, we were supposed to always go to him so that he could fight for us. So that his power would be shown and magnified and glorified by us. Relying on Yah's power. So whenever we had victory, it wouldn't be on our account. It would be on Yah's. It would be because we submitted ourselves to him. 